Hello Michelle, I am back from Noosa. I considered videoing while I was in a pool at Noosa and mimicking your video which was hilarious in my mind and then the logistics of it. I was really happy when I discovered the organization called Give Well and through Give Well I also discovered Effective Altruism Australia because they try to look at charitable giving from a really objective and scientific point of view. They try to figure out how can they measure effectiveness of an organization and so that might mean that the organization actually needs to spend a lot on its admin to be able to get what seems like relatively little done in the field but it might actually have a greater or longer term effect than something else that has really low admin fees. These organizations have created their own sort of formulas for assessing whether an organization is making effective change in the world and sort of how much that change is worth. And for money value, like if you're just deciding to put $10 to one of these organizations, how effective those dollars will be at making a change, a positive change for the world. So as a result, I went by their recommendations. So we donated to the Against Malaria Foundation, which is one of the top recommended organizations. I then sort of read about Give Directly, which is just giving poor people cash uh, in very, very poor areas of the world. And, you know, I trusted that they were doing it in a wise way, that it wasn't just like, you know, giving a random person in the street like a thousand dollars and they were used to having one cent or something like that. But, you know, it was a little bit more sensible than that. It turns out that they were being very sensible about it. They were doing, they'd even looked at things like if you give one family some extra cash than the family next door. There can be real problems in the community created because one family's been given money and one hasn't and all this sort of stuff. So they'd even worked on stuff like that. So they would actually approach a village at a time and give each household a set amount of money. So I was giving to give directly for a while, but they've just mentioned that they've been receiving the, the findings of how this, how this research is going, how this giving is going and that it's not as positive as they had hoped, that there are still some problems that are occurring even though they're sort of approaching a village at a time, and there are problems like it is raising the quality of life and opportunities for people for an amount of time, so for example for one year, but then everything is going back the way that it was. So they're still reviewing, they, they just released this kind of email which was a summary of what they think the findings are going to say from having a brief read of this massive findings paper. But they're going to then read through it properly and present a more accurate summary of what it says. So it's fascinating to me because, you know, they're trying as hard as they can to sort of figure out what is being effective in the world when it comes to um, giving and I think changing the lives of others for the better because there's so, in so much inequality. I read their newsletters and just my mind is almost blown every time with how many factors there are and how intricate it is and how careful they have to be when they make their recommendations that they're like controlling for this and considering this and you know something that works in one place doesn't work in another place. You'd think we'd be able to just work out a way of uh, evenly distributing <laughs> what we have in the world with everyone who is in the world and realize that it actually wasn't going to harm us as much as we think it would harm us. Like, no, because then we wouldn't have a blah. I've been really enjoying a YouTube channel. Uh, I've like binge watched, I don't know, 15 episodes over a few nights uh, by a guy called Dr. Mike. And 
so far I've seen him do two main genres of videos. One is that he'll watch a medical genre TV show and while he's watching it he'll talk about how uh, truthful a portrayal it is of like the procedure or the way that that would happen in a hospital or the way that someone would talk to someone or whatever. And he seems to be just such a nice level-headed, well-informed and preferring objective, scientific, evidence-based information and I've really enjoyed watching his videos. Sorry, the other genre is um, him just answering people's questions. So people write in the YouTube comments, you know, what, what are your thoughts on plastic surgery? Or uh, if you sleep with an onion in your room, does it take the bacteria out of the air? You know, everything, the whole gamut. I will link to Dr. Mike below. You might have already seen him because I think you've watched more of YouTube than I have. And then I also saw in the comments last night, um, someone said, I wish that there was a legal version of this, like a lawyer who watches uh, legal industry TV shows, like Law and Order or whatever, and uh, comments on how accurate they are. And someone said, yes, there is a person, legal eagle. So I will link to them as well, but I haven't actually watched any of their videos yet. I was thinking the other day about how weird humans are. I think about that a lot. But particularly in that we would say to each other, we would want us all to be decent to each other. And we would say to each other, we would like to treat everyone beautifully and then hope to be treated beautifully in return. But I feel like the biggest, well, there's probably something even bigger, but the biggest, most blatant display of this not happening in my everyday life is that we still see marketing practices that are intending to deceive. In UX, they call it, you know, dark UX or dark patterns, or you know, there's some phrases like that, so dark marketing. And I feel like I can't take humans seriously, you know, as, as like a, a whole, as a general, general theory that we want to be nice to each other and the world could be a nice place. When I see a product that says it's $4.95 and you can go into any store anywhere and you will see the 95 and every time I see it, I just think humans are not very nice to each other. Like anyone who has ever sold a product and has ever done that is trying to get more money out of another person in a deceptive kind of way. Uh, and it might be that the value of that product is actually $5 and that they think, well, it is worth $5. I need to earn the $5 for it to be able to pay my overheads and to be able to have a living profit from my business. But by listing it as $4.95, you're hoping that more people might be persuaded to buy that $5 product by kind of deceiving them, by, by appealing to that weird trick that, that people are seeing four at the start of the number instead of five and somewhere in there thinking that it's less than it is, that they're paying less than five dollars, that it's not that much of a spend. <sighs> oh my goodness, I ramble. So one kind of shop that I would like to see is the $5 shop. And by that I mean the products in there are just listed as the rounded up version of their prices. There's no 95 or 99 or whatever. The other shop that I would like to see is the shop that doesn't stock $7 jeans. And I don't mean that they just stock $100 jeans and they've just got some crazy profit on it and 
everything's been unethically outsourced in an awful factory and you know all that sort of stuff I mean like you can buy seven dollar jeans at quite a few stores and that makes me really uncomfortable because I don't think that any human's time could be worth seven dollars to get that those jeans there even if mass produced by robots and the robots deliver them and the robots are manning the store and you self check out like it's just not possible so something terrible is happening along the way even if it's that they're drastically cutting their profit for that product to get you into the store to buy other products like that's the sort of dark UX dark patterns thing like that's still deceptive you know not cool so yeah I would really like some shops to shop at that have products whether it's food or clothes or whatever that are a price where a healthy amount is going to the people who get the materials the people who construct the thing the people who do the marketing the people who do the admin the people who manage the other people the overheads the healthy profit whatever like I just it just it baffles me that even with such good information sharing that we have at the moment I feel like every time I spend money on something I'm supporting a business that I shouldn't be supporting I felt quite I don't know what to say flat I might have just been sleep deprivation because Sky still isn't sleeping well. She's like two and a half and she's still not sleeping well. But I think when you stop doing some things and then before you know it, you've stopped doing them for like a month, like say going to yoga or getting out of the house just to do something for yourself, like just wander around the shops or <sighs> nature or listen to a podcast or whatever. And kind of this cumulative effect of you haven't been in touch with some friends for a while and then it's like you almost feel grumpy about getting in touch with those friends because they haven't been in touch with you so then my point is that that I had to remember something that I learned when I suffered depression a long time ago which is that energy begets energy and life begets life and if you can force yourself you know that whole fake it till you make it thing if you can force yourself to do something that requires energy or life life liveliness uh, so like going for a walk or writing a letter to someone or pretending to be cheerful about something or making a social event with someone or whatever it is then something just happens and you get such a reward from that and maybe like the other the friend really enjoys your company and really apologizes that they haven't seen you for a while and that their life has been really bad lately and that they've just been so stressed and whatever and then you're like oh well that's why they haven't been in touch with me and then it just it's kind of snowballs because then it just gives you the energy for the next little thing and the next little thing and before you know it you're like you're doing pretty good so while we were on holiday I had to kind of force myself to do a few things uh, it sounds so goofy doesn't it but I've been finding that my energy levels are <laughs> bit better now even doing a Monaco video okay this is going to be a really goofy question but what is a KitchenAid good for because I understand if you're like doing a lot of things in the kitchen like you want to make cakes and you want to make biscuits and you want to make I don't know a stew I see I don't even know that you have to get out your mixing bowl and your mixer and you put in your like 
prong things into the mixer and you mix around and then you have to put the mixer back in the cupboard and wash the prong things and wash the bowl. And with a KitchenAid, isn't it just like a bowl with the mixer but permanently taking up space on your kitchen counter? So like you can press the buttons for like blend this or put in the dough prongs or whatever but you still have to wash the bowl, you still have to wash the prongs and it just takes up space permanently. What am I missing? Also, if you have any tips on how I can possibly start to enjoy cooking, baking, anything to do with food in any way, please let me know because I have hated it for so long and James just took over when we moved in together. So for the past like four, five years, he's just been like the master of the kitchen and making whatever and buying the ingredients and all that sort of stuff and researching recipes and everything. And I've just been, you know, I'm just in the back corner just eating what's given to me, which is always delicious. But anyway, I don't wanna be that as a role model for my kids. I wanna be someone who shows enjoyment of food, enjoyment of like fresh ingredients and delicious things. And also to give the kids those memories, like, you know, we ate beautiful, freshly baked blueberry muffins or whatever it is. Like I, I more wanna be that kind of person, but I just hate it. So yeah. Even if there's like a $10,000 machine that you press the button and you've put in the blueberries and the flour and it makes the whole thing for you, just if you have any ideas. I don't know how to like food more. Maybe I can get like a food coach. Okay. I love you, bye, 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 love you, bye, I love you, bye.